Amen. Well, if my judges are ready, am I Tyra? Firm of team? Thank you. Grayson? Yeah. My audience, are you ready? Yeah. yeah. All right then, let's begin. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. This phrase refers to a situation when one is in a seemingly bad circumstance, but makes such a hasty and arbitrary decision that they land themselves in a worse problem. Unfortunately, this is the case with many United States policy decisions, such as getting the debt so high, and the affirmative to use plan is no exception. In this speech, we're going to be looking at a few uh, harm responses, and then we're going to be looking at some disadvantages, negative ramifications of the affirmative to use plan, problems that it would cause, and we'll see by the end of the speech that the affirmative to use plan won't solve problems, it will only cause them. First off, I'd like to ask a question. I'd like them to bring up a plan advocate. They didn't bring one up in their first speech, so I'd like to ask them to bring up an expert who actually supports their plan, who says that ratifying this treaty is a good idea, given we need more than the opinion of high school debaters from either team to actually verify if a plan is a good idea. So I'd ask them to bring up a plan advocate, someone who supports their plan, before we can move further in the round. Now let's go down to their justification one of human life. Now I have one response, no significant effect. No significant effect. Now, yes, all human life is significant, but we need to look at it from a cost-benefit analysis. Cluster munitions don't actually kill nearly as many people as the affirmative team claim. They claim a number in the thousands. However, this simply isn't so. Cluster munitions don't actually kill many civilians. Let's look at the Georgia war that the affirmative team kept referencing with Russia from the Landmine and Cluster Munition Monitor post-2008, who said, quote, Russia most recently used cluster munitions in the August 2008 conflict with Georgia. According to Human Rights Watch, Rus Russian cluster munitions strikes on populated areas killed 12 civilians, end quote. On populated areas. In that war they keep referencing, they threw on populated areas and it killed only 12 people. Cluster 12 civilians, that is. Cluster munitions don't actually kill that many civilians. The affirmative team is asking, acting as if this is a massive moral problem in the thousands. However, we need to look at it from a cost-benefit analysis. Yes, all human life is sacred, but we also need to take a look at the advantages that cluster munitions offer us. Now that we've taken a look at these two points, let's look at a solvency point of reliable versus unreliable. Reliable versus unreliable. Now, in the affirmative team's mandates, they have a subpoint A of immediately ban all unreliable cluster munitions, and a subpoint B of phase out all the reliable ones. Now, I asked in the cross-examination, how do you tell whether a cluster munition is reliable or unreliable? He said we can't. He said that the only way we can tell is after they explode, when we go test them in the field. That's the only way you can tell whether they're reliable or unreliable. Thus, the affirmative team can't actually stop using immediately all unreliable weapons, given they don't know which ones are unreliable until after they explode. There's no actual way here for the affirmative team to enforce this plan, given there's no way to tell before they explode whether they will actually work or not. This means that the affirmative team's plan shouldn't be enacted given it can't actually work. There's no way to tell the difference between these weapons before they explode. There's no way to tell how to actually put the plan into force. Now let's look at a few disadvantages. First, we're going to be looking at one of funding, with disadvantage one of a governmental shutdown. A governmental shutdown. Now the affirmative team's plan spends money. That's obvious. My partner came up and talked about in their last speech how, first off, they have to prove how much money it takes to actually make these new alternative weapons they keep talking about, and secondly, how much money it takes to, dis to get rid of the ones that we currently have. They came up and said it's about $2 billion for the ones they currently have, but they didn't respond to how much it will take to make the new ones. Now, we have to look at a couple of sub points here. Sub point A is no funds available. No funds available. Now, in the status quo, we have reached the debt ceiling. That means that we can't spend any more money. If we were maybe cutting a specific program that we could actually know the specific funds, then maybe it could be put in place. But the affirmative team's plan just says normal means. And for Congress, normal means is pile it on top of the debt. That's what the affirmative team's plan would actually do. And we can't actually allow this. There are no funds available at the moment. This plan, if, even if it was a good idea, which it is our contention it isn't, but even if it was a good idea, it wouldn't be able to be workable right now. It would have to be done in the future when we actually have a stable economy and are able to predict how much money this plan will cost and how much money we can contribute to it. This leads me right to my second sub one, sub point B of no specific numbers no specific numbers. Now the affirmative team has not provided you with specific numbers of how much it will cost to replace with these new alternative weapons, how much money that will actually take. We've seen so far that it will cost $2 billion, which is a lot more than we have right now, 
but, and that's even more than that for their plank, and we haven't seen how much it will cost to replace them. So the impact of this is economic devastation. If, a gov if the government wants to shut down, then government services would stop being paid. That includes the post office, that includes the army. All those services would stop being paid, given the government simply can't function anymore. That's what the affirmative team's plan would lead to because of the debt ceiling. There's no more money available at the moment. In a few years, when we've done a bit to solve the economy, and we can actually spend a bit more money, then perhaps we can do this. But given they're just piling onto the debt through normal means, we aren't able to do this, given the debt ceiling has been reached and there's no funds available. Now that we've seen this disadvantage, it's important to look at the advantages of cluster munitions and why the United States has kept them in place, why they, why they haven't been banned. With this advantage too, of military effectiveness hurt. Military effectiveness hurt. Now there's a very clear reason the United States has not banned cluster munitions. It's because they're very useful in warfare for, against enemy soldiers. Let's look at sub point A of cluster munitions essential. Cluster munitions essential. Cluster munitions are essential to our military strategy. The Harvard National Security Journal said on August 24, 2010, quote, even after the convention was drafted, the Department of Defense has maintained that cluster munitions have clear military utility in combat that saves the lives of United States soldiers. If the effects of the convention force the United States to reconsider cluster munitions use sooner than anticipated, the effect on United States military readiness could be substantial. In 2008, Richard Kidd, then the director of the State Department's Office of Weapons Removal and Abatement, stated in response to the convention, cluster munitions are available for use by every combat aircraft in the United States inventory. They are integral to Army or Marine maneuver element and in some cases constitute up to 50% of tactical indirect fire support. United States forces cannot fight by design or by doctrine without holding out at least the possibility of using cluster munitions." End quote. Cluster munitions, the reason we haven't banned them is because they're essential to our military strategy in wars that we fight. We actually need these cluster munitions in order to fight. It said, the article said that the Department of Defense stated that we save the lives of United States soldiers by having cluster munitions available. And as we looked at near the beginning of the speech, they don't actually kill as many civilians as the affirmative team claims. Cluster munitions are essential to our military strategy, which leads to the impact of unnecessary death. Unnecessary death. If you were to vote for the affirmative team's plan and not using these cluster munitions anymore, you would be voting to lose the lives of American soldiers. The piece of evidence clearly stated that the Department of Defense has concluded that United States soldiers' lives will be lost if we do not have cluster munitions available. Cluster munitions are essential to our military strategy. So we've seen that first off, cluster munitions don't kill as many civilians as, we, as the affirmative team claims. That when dropped on a populated area, they killed 12 civilians, nowhere near the thousand the affirmative team is saying. We also see that there's no way for them to tell between reliable and unreliable weapons until after they explode, when it's useless then. We also saw that the affirmative team's plan cannot be put in place right now because we simply don't have any money available and the debt ceiling has been reached. And finally, if we want to save the lives of American soldiers, we need to keep the option of cluster munitions available. I ask you to vote against this plan. Thank you. Is everyone ready? Right, I got just a couple questions for you. First off, talking about the point how there's no significant effect of cluster munitions right now. Now, did you ever dispute the fact our justification one sub point A evidence in the one AC saying that cluster munitions are one of the most dangerous conventional weapons out there for civilians? I was addressing the specific example you brought up of historical precedents of Russia, the, the Russian example war in Georgia. Of Georgia. Now, was that the only example we've given in this debate round of when cluster bombs have been used? Um, I didn't address the other examples. I was specifically talking about this example you've talked right. a lot about. Your now, did you present any overall piece of evidence saying that on a whole, cluster munitions are not devastating to, civilian, to civilians? I was more talking about the specific example that you right. talked about a right. times. One example of Georgia. All right. Now, did you read any evidence refuting our justification 1 sub point C evidence in the 1AC saying that sensor fused weapons result in fewer civilian casualties than uh, unreliable cluster munitions and reliable? I respond to this by saying that cluster munitions are integral to our military strategy and that by not using right. them, we lose the lives of weapons. Okay, but did you read any evidence saying that sensor fused weapons are in any way worse than legacy cluster munitions? I didn't talk about sensor fused weapons. I was you talking about the advantages okay. of cluster munitions. All right, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Now, if we, can, if we can save lives, you would agree with me, of course, that we should do that, correct? 
Um, whichever, whichever team, whichever ballot saves more lives or whichever ballot provides more advantages is the way to vote, yeah. Okay, all right, wonderful. Now, let's talk about funding for a little bit. Now, you said essentially we're removing the debt ceiling. Now, did you read any evidence saying that it is impossible for Congress to spend any money right now or in future fiscal years? I wouldn't say it was impossible for them to all save right. money. I said it's a terrible idea for it's them to spend It's a bad idea, money. but it is possible. It's possible, but that would cause okay. a governmental shutdown. Right. It's possible. It would be okay. possible for us to nuke Russia, but that's not right. good. No, I understand. <laughs> Did you read any evidence on this issue of funding? Uh, I didn't read any evidence. It was All just right. a matter of public record. understand. All right. Thank you. Now, let's talk about your disadvantage of the military strategy, because obviously right. that's an important issue in today's debate. Indeed. Now, do you agree with me that from a military perspective, having a weapon that you can aim is going to be more valuable than a weapon that's unguided, correct? Uh, the piece of evidence I didn't it's just specifically in general, the issue. I'm just talking hypothetically. If you if you were in the military, you'd prefer to be using weapons that when you drop them in the bomb, you know where it's going, as to when you don't know where it's going. Uh, most likely, I don't. Right. I don't prefer to make generalizations. I, I prefer to look at specifics. All right. Now let's talk about specifics. Actually, did you read any specific evidence saying that sense of fused weapons were uh, worse than legacy clutch munitions? Um, I wasn't talking about sensor-fused munitions in the okay. speech, I was talking about the advantages right. of For that munitions. matter, up to this point in this debate round, has the negative team ever read any evidence saying upgrading would be a bad idea? We haven't read evidence about the sensor-fused okay. munitions. We've read right. evidence about the current system and the advantages of our current system. Right, I understand that. All right, now All right. you would agree with me, of course, through this disadvantage, you quoted the Department of Defense saying how important cluster munitions are. Mm -hmm. So you would agree with me that it is our current military policy to use cluster munitions, correct? Yes, that's, All right. and this is the reason for that, that they're effective and save lives. All right, thank you. Now, did you ever refute our justification to use the point see evidence saying that there is a safer alternative that is also better from a military perspective. I was talking in the speech about the advantages of the current system and why we can't do right. a plan right now because of the funding issues. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.